This is episode number 29, a solo Q&A episode around developing your mindset. Welcome to the Doc Fitness Podcast, where it's all about developing your mindset, training and nutritional knowledge, so you can lose body fat and build muscle effectively while still living a real life. I am your host, David O'Connor. Now let's get into the show. How are we keeping guys and a big welcome back to the Doc Fitness Podcast and today is a bit of a different style episode because usually when I ask or send out a survey on Instagram or through my email list for any questions around any kind of health fitness related topics, I usually take three or four questions to go deep into them. But for this episode, there was one question that stood out to me and I thought that I might take one episode and go a little little bit deeper into it in terms of um, stuff that I just don't talk about that often. And I think there's a lot of takeaways for people here because this is usually stuff that I'll deal with in the background with clients because I don't like sharing mindset stuff that often. I don't want to come across as some, you know, someone claiming to be some sort of mindset guru or quote unquote life coach, with pe- which people claim them to be, claim themselves to be. And just kind of, I cringe when I see that myself and I hate people kind of, not that I hate people uh, saying it out there like, but people that, like, how can you claim to be a life coach when you're fucking 24 years of age or 21 or 22? And I've seen that out there like, so again, I'm very, se- I'm very selective with this kind of stuff that I put out to the general public because I don't want to come across as being someone different when I'm not like, if that makes sense. But in the background, we do work a lot with clients in terms of like perspective based stuff around their weeks, psychology around their training, around their nutrition, just so they can get the most out of their training and nutrition so they can get the results that they want long term and sustain those results. And that comes down to like goal setting stuff, setting kind of concrete values for yourself, setting the reasons why behind doing what you're doing. And basically, the question I got was, how have you developed your mindset to always take positives from situations? Now, the first thing I want to say with these guys is, like I've already said, I'm not someone who claims to know everything. I'm not someone that has fucking this shit figured out, so to speak. But I do want to share my experiences with things over time. I'm human in the day. I'm not perfect. Like, I don't claim to be. And I don't want people to think that just because they might follow me on Instagram or on our gym page or read my emails that everything is la di da. Like everyone has their own stuff going on. Everyone goes through their own struggles with different things. Um, so just remember that. I'm still human at the end of the day. I'm not someone that's claiming to be fucking above everyone else or anything like that at all. So even in that question itself, how do I always, always is the word I'm, I'm kind of highlighting here, take positives from situations. I don't always take positives from situations. Um, there's always going to be times where you kind of overreact to different things. But over the years, I do feel that I've gotten way better at the way I prospectively view things. And there's a little story behind that. And kind of the story I want to start with here is that, I don't know, if I rewind probably eight, nine years ago, when I was kind of coming out the ladder into college and I was actually starting to seriously think about what direction am I going on with things. I still hadn't a clue. Like, I um, still don't know these days. <laughs> but... It was more so going through an age where just my ego was taking the better of nearly everything and I wasn't really aware of it. You know, I'd go to the gym and I'd crank out as much weight as I could, even though I was training horrifically, probably going to injure myself if I stay going that way. And then I'd be a week off the gym, then I'd go back again, do one session, and then I'd go drinking for a few nights because you were in college. And then, but you always thought that you were bigger than you were. Like, you always thought that, you know, you had the upper hand with everything because you're kind of at that age where I don't know how to describe it really. You just think that are able to do everything if that makes sense i don't know if that even makes sense but i was kind of going through that period in life like where that was going to happen then i started to realize all right what the hell am i doing after college like what's what's going to happen there and i remember like i i'd start to overreact to a lot of tiny situations little things like sitting in traffic if someone cut you off in traffic i would lose the rag i'd be roaring i'd be beeping like a lot of, like i see a lot of people do today um those type of small situations that kind of crop up in everyday life but i'd always be the person that would overreact to it and be like oh you fucking prick cut me off in the traffic or whatever it might be and um that kind of creeped over into other areas as well i used to creep home with like family members at home and used to creep into my relationships so like I wouldn't exactly see where, you know, somebody would be coming from in terms of like if they said something or if they're in a certain mood that day and they might have said something and I took it up the wrong way and I didn't, I'd always overreact in those situations and then I might cause a full-blown row with a family member or something like that. And I was kind of like, I don't, I don't want to be 
I don't want to be doing this. Like, I don't want to be feeling that way. I don't want to be overthinking things. And I don't want to be kind of living this lifestyle. Because I found that I was becoming a very negative person overall. Like, because it was starting to creep into little things. And the biggest saviour for me was um, when I opened up Doc Fitness, I was coaching people that had similar struggles to me. So, like, I had to be there for them. And that's what kind of initially started to change me first to realise that, like, so there's always someone that's worse off than you no matter what you think is going on in your own head like and that kind of grounds you a lot as well at times and that was kind of the, the trigger for me to start looking into more personal development stuff more mindset stuff because a lot of it stemmed from wanting to help clients foremost and i naturally kind of got better at things over time because of that anyway but like when i first kind of tried to grasp a hole in things it was simple really it was more so like reading goals books any kind of recommendation of like a mindset personal development slash goal setting book i read the feckin thing like i remember there was authors like robin sharma um most in recent years lewis howes um what else was there? there was there was books on specific goal setting there was books on kind of more awareness stuff there was books on more mindset stuff there was books on creating values for yourself um the chimp paradox is another one and uh, these are just books now that are flying into my head as i'm talking michael heppel was another great book that i read and i think that's where i first um took a lot of takeaways that i was able to apply to clients and that's where things started to kind of change a lot more for me so that i'm i was able then to help clients on a much deeper level each week because i was practicing myself and i was kind of living those those things as such and if you're confused to now excuse me this will all get a little bit clearer in a minute like but if we look at that book that i read by michael heppel it was called 90 days to brilliance and i can put this in the show notes page for um at the end of this episode anyway if you want to check out any of those books but 90 days to brilliance was basically about the way i thought what i thought it was was a book about setting yourself up to achieve a lot in 90 days and i was actually recommended it by a business coach as a business book to help kind of accelerate your business in the early days of doc fitness this is about seven years ago six years ago seven years ago and I started to realize how powerful that book was from a personal development standpoint because one of the first things it got you to do in that book was to create what's called a wheel of life. And I still, to this day, use that wheel of life with clients annually throughout the year when we sit down for our annual goal setting workshop. You see, because we set goals on a quarterly basis with our clients. So like, if we have somebody start with us from scratch, either online or in the gym, we get them to do six week goals. And those six-week goals are like a scaled-down version of our 90-day goal-setting system. And this is kind of stuff that we've, I've kind of, I've done it in the past, right? And then I've tweaked it over time to kind of turn it, turn it into what we think works the best um, for us, based on our values and based on what we kind of preach, and uh, being able to apply that to our clients. We set up, we, we have our own kind of a quote-unquote goal-setting system, if you like. So we have a, like a six-week one to start with, so clients are not overwhelmed by it. Um, but it's not just setting goals. It's not just writing down, I want to lose five kilos on a piece of paper. It's more so figuring out the deeper levels to that onion. So you're peeling back the layers of onion to find out really why you're doing something in the first place. And that wheel of life kind of caused me to do, or to look at Doc Fitness in a much deeper way to realize that I have a really, really strong purpose behind Doc Fitness and what I want to do and achieve with it and the amount of people that I want to help. And that's what really drove me for that first. But then all I did was I started to apply that to my own life. Do you know, so like, why was I training? Why was I trying to eat better and get and get better health overall? Why was I trying to get stronger? Why was I trying to get fitter? What, why, what was the real reason behind all these kind of different things? And the wheel of life kind of gets you to look at areas like health, happiness, relationships, your job, your financial income, all that kind of stuff. So it's taken into account basically everything that goes on in your life. And it helps you kind of highlight areas that might need work and then it kind of gets you a little bit deeper into the reasons why you might do what you do. And from there, then you set goals based off that. So like that obviously has helped me along the way personally. But again, we've applied this to our clients. I've had to learn that stuff inside and out. I've had to learn the psychology behind it so I can best help our clients with that. So again, it's easy to see how much I've learned to date based on this stuff because I have to learn it for our clients if that makes sense because we're big on the goal setting aspect of here if, if somebody wants to join Doc Fitness we're not just a training facility we train our clients and we have some stellar coaches that do that and we all do that but we also are evidence based practitioner, practitioners in that we coach our clients nutritionally based on science 
based on them as a person, their values, their beliefs, their even the environment they go home to during the day is going to have an effect on how we coach them nutritionally. So they can realistically change habits for the long term. And we coach them with their mindset as well. Um, which again, it's absolutely massive. But again, we don't promote that too much because once they start, we just do it with them. And they realize down the line, oh my God, it, it, this is so much more than just quote unquote a gym. Like we don't really classify ourselves as a, as a gym that much. But again, from the person looking from the outside in, um, it just, it's easier to say doc fitness gym, if that makes sense for them. So where am I going with this? Kind of that's where things start for me was that book and how we've applied that to doc fitness and setting goals over time, right? But that's only kind of one part of it. There's a whole other side to kind of like quote unquote, if you want to umbrella term this kind of what I'm talking about quote unquote mindset and like mindset is kind of like your day to day life is the way I look at it and once I was reading all these kind of books and like Robin Sharma's books for example like the monk that sold his Ferrari I thought was a great book because he he wrote that book in a storytelling format basically saying like everyone's gonna fucking die live by certain values set goals yourself and kind of go after what you want and obviously now these days in 2019 people are you know, taking motivational quotes left, right and centre and putting them all over Instagram and you can go off the deep end with it as well. You can become someone that appears to be too feckin' positive day in, day out. Again, we're not that as well at the same time, if that makes sense. But I kind of started to see how I was going down that path too. And you know, if clients were kind of jumping up with struggles and stuff, I would nearly be always be happy Larry with them and say, try and always give them a solution when I realise, okay, that's not the way real life feckin' works like. But again, I read book after book, guys, on goal setting stuff and basic mindset stuff um, and the psychology behind that and then obviously I went into more deeper psychology stuff that I won't even bother getting into for this episode because it's not about that and the biggest but one of the biggest takeaways from here is that number one to answer that question how do I how have I developed my mindset I read a shit ton of books I've gone to specific conferences that are based on developing yourself as a person I've had business coaches that have directed me for those books so I went to Ray and read those books because I trust in that person and I would have never seen those books otherwise I would never heard of uh, any specific podcast to listen to. That's another thing that I've obviously invested hours in is um, certain podcasts that I find that relate to me and that they're they're based on kind of like, they're not based on airy fairy stuff to help develop you as a person. Um, that all has, has played a role in that in general. But one of the biggest things that I've kind of adhered to daily is, and I'm a big fan of personally, like obviously you don't, you don't have to kind of, look into this stuff but if you want to see kind of what the way of life is around it i absolutely love it it's called stoic philosophy and it's funny because whenever anyone asks me about the few tattoos i have i never tell them because number one they're, they're personal to me and i don't want to bother telling anyone but a lot of them are based on stoic philosophy and what is feckin' stoic philosophy and how like how did i come across that and i suppose the easy center to that it was that I came across it based on these books. So when I was going through podcasts, when I was reading book after book during the stuff, when I was going to seminars, this word stoicism was popping up every now and then because there were similarities in stoicism across the board. And I'm just going to read off a little page here on Google. If you if you Google stoic philosophy, this is the first thing that comes up. So stoicism is an ancient Greek philosophy which teaches the development of self-control and fortitude as a means of overcoming destructive emotions. So if you would try to apply that to real life and you're sitting in a car and somebody cuts you off on the road, it's not reacting to that. Because by you roaring at that person in the car or by you beeping the horn and, and fucking and blinding, whatever it might be, like what good is going to come out of that? There is absolutely zero that's going to help that situation by you roaring at that person or people in the horn. Even if someone's with you in the car, you can imagine it puts a, just a fucking shitty vibe into that atmosphere. And then, let's just say, if somebody said to you in the car, why are you bothering people at them? Then you fly off the handle and you shout back at that person saying, they cut me off, I fucking people want to beep. And then boom, there's a little kind of, little row starting to happen there between you and your partner, you and your friend or whatever it might be. But you can see how these things kind of can catapult and, and seep into other areas of life. Like, and, that's what kind of this stoicism stuff is about it's overcoming these destructive emotions and kind of having the control there in the first place and to see things from a different perspective like you haven't a clue why that person cut you off they could be rushed to the hospital because their fucking son is very sick or whatever it might be or else they're just being a dick and cutting you off still it does not matter you're not going to gain anything by roaring and shouting and beeping the horn or whatever it might be um 
So hopefully that makes sense for that first one. The second kind of part then here to this is that it does not seek to extinguish emotions completely, but rather seeks to transform them by a resolute, now I hope I pronounce this next word right, asceticism, which enables a person to develop clear judgment, inner calm and freedom from suffering, which is the ultimate goal of what stoicism is. It's not a set of beliefs, or ethical claims but it's a rather a way of life and this is kind of why i like it like you're you know you're able to take what you take from this kind of stuff and apply it to your own life and just to finish off this paragraph here involving constant practice and training which again what i've been doing for the last since i've kind of introduced this over time and like like every like mindset slash psychology based book i've read um, and incorporating the practice of logic socratic dialogue and self-dialogue contemplation of death which is another massive thing i'll get to that in a second and a kind of meditation aimed at training one's attention to remain in the present moment because you know if you're fine off the handle and you're overreacting to situations you're not kind of staying in the present of what's truly going on if that makes sense and 90 percent of the time there's absolutely no good going to come out of people overreacting to little things and because someone is so long you know they're so long in life doing that they don't even realize it's happening and this is why as well i sometimes i get into debates with people like they're saying oh did you see such and such in the news or whatever i'm like no i don't really watch the news at all or i don't really read the newspapers like don't get me wrong i'd stay on top of big things going on like but i don't i wouldn't be like your average joe where i buy a paper every day or i watch the news every evening um even recording this i can't even remember the last time i watched the news on tv i just don't like uh, because and look at there's different ways you can look at that people can argue oh you need to keep on top of the news but why why do i need to keep on top of car crashes dying up and down the country and x y and z because the news promotes stuff that is quote-unquote bad or stuff that's going to create a buzz for them to sell more newspapers i can stay in the loop with that kind of big stuff if i want to um but i just choose not to be consumed by it every day because again it's not doing me personally any good and that doesn't mean i'm keeping out of the loop with political stuff and all that kind of crack like i do but again i don't let it consume me because it's funny that people again they don't even know this is going on but like they start to develop just a kind of negative vibe about them because you know, they're con- they read newspapers at home that's all about bad stuff they sit in the car listen to kind of bad stuff on the radio all along and they're flying off the handle with little situations they go to a job they don't fucking like they come home to a stressful relationship because of all that and again it just gets compounded over time and if that person is not working on themselves like if they're not bothering to ever set a goal for themselves if they're not ever bothering to read a personal development book if they don't ever bother to quote unquote meditate a little bit and what i mean by meditate i could mean going for a 10 minute walk i could mean going for like a yoga class going for a swim in a swimming pool by yourself do you know what i mean like meditation doesn't mean you sit down and fucking meditate um it could mean different things for you but you know they don't do any of that kind of self kind of personal development self-care stuff so it's easy to kind of go down the path where they're not even aware they're going down like and that's kind of a reason why again i love the kind of this kind of stoicism stuff because if even if you go to google and you read up on it and you've gone to ryan holiday's website the daily stoic again i would put all this in the show notes i'm gonna write this down now here as i'm talking um you'll see how powerful this stuff can be over time as a, like a practice of life and one of the big things that i wrote there as well or that was written in this article that i read online is the first one like up in google it reminds you about death and the fact that we came in the same way that we're kind of going out type thing and um, i know it's kind of harsh and it's raw to think of it that way but like we all end up in a box in the way or a bit of cremation cremation whatever it is but like when you remind yourself of that and when you know that's coming you kind of get out of your own bullshit and kind of do what you want to do over time you know you you might sign up for the fitness class you want to you might get onto that coach that's going to help you better your life in a hundred different ways you might go on that holiday you've always been wanting to go on you might do x y and z do you know what i mean so this is why this stuff i think is so powerful like and i teach you about perspective based stuff as well again overcoming destructive emotions and kind of transforming the way you view things and all that kind of stuff and the coolest thing about this is that it, it got me to look at um our clients in different ways and that like there i back in the day like i used to think that if i was dealing with let's just say if i was dealing with 10 clients right i could do all the same approach with all those 10 to be grand do x y and z we'll get the results they want and then i started to wonder why you know three people out of that group weren't getting anywhere near the results they could have compared to the other seven because they all live in different environments they're all brought up different ways they all have different experiences they all have different beliefs and they all have different psychologies behind doing what they're doing like they don't go home every day um 
to a nice camp house with and they know how to cook a nice fresh meal that's going to productively set up for the next day they, they could be going home to um, divorces with a partner and their mind of five kids they be, could be going home to a family environment where no one gets on the house Do you know there's, there's all these kind of factors that are at play like and I started to see that with clients and realise okay I can start to relate to their struggles on a little bit more because I'm starting to realise and put myself in their shoes a little bit more that life isn't as fucking easy and straightforward for them which is going to affect their nutrition which is going to affect their training and little things so again it helped me better course them over time but again even if you look at from a, a regular interaction with people or if someone's in a pissed off mood at work and you're you're, you're bitching about x y or z person this kind of stoicism stuff it kind of reminds you as well to be grateful for the small things in life so you know kind of gossiping and just basic negativity starts to kind of go out of you like and you just you just end up not having time for that shit anymore um and if you're dealing with someone let's say and you know for a fact they're having a bad day something's up something's going on you don't act the victim and say oh they're being a dickhead to me and then you get ratty because of that you start to realize that shit might be going on in their life and shit might be hard for them right now and you can kind of see that if that makes sense now again even if they're just shitty people and they're being arseholes at least you're able to see that as well and you're not reacting to that do you know what i mean so i'm probably going a little bit way too deep for this podcast but it's something that has helped me greatly over time it's something that i'm able to apply to our clients and have greatly over time but like this is a constant thing this is not something that you learn you're reading a book and, and you just okay you know you know what no, now i'm gonna go ahead and do it you're constantly refining things and doing things and probably the biggest lesson from this whole episode guys is that like every single scenario you encounter every single thing you do it's a fucking learning experience and again i struggle with this an awful lot in the very like the first couple of years of doc fitness um i struggled an awful lot with that in terms of like if we had new clients start i remember when, when we had our when doc fitness first opened there was a we had a, I had a set number of clients i think it like 15 clients to start with the first day had five clients and robbie coach robbie was actually one of those and um they stayed with me for a few months in the early months and then the, the like things started literally doubling overnight i went from five clients to 50 clients on my own went from 50 clients to 100 clients on my own and only for i kind of care to go home to and and throw my do you know my kind of like uh how can i put it any scenarios that were happening or what was going on it was grand to be able to talk to her about it but what i didn't what, what i wasn't expecting to happen was when that one of those kind of one of my long-term clients first left I took that so personally because I just I just thought it was something that I did wrong and not realising that it, it could be down to a life thing if someone moved away X, Y, or Z and of course you have to take responsibility as well to improve the business but that's from a business standpoint but like my mindset and perspective around that it used to kind of cripple me for days like and I'd be thinking about you know, if somebody rang to inquire about the gym and they didn't join the gym I'd be thinking it was it was completely my fault and no one else's and while it might have been I used to I used to really let it kind of get me down and that was another reason to kind of spark up to kind of progress myself as a person so I could see those in different ways and I look at that has developed over time that has developed over the last six to seven years and it's a constant work in progress like but again this stoic stuff I think is fantastic this is Ryan Holiday is another great author he has books on called Ego is the Enemy The Obstacle is the Way I've mentioned these in numerous podcasts I think guys as well I, I put these in um, the show notes and he's a book there's a book out now called the daily stoic as well where it's kind of like a 365 days of the year book where i think it's more or less like a chapter or like a, a passage a paragraph a day followed by kind of a quote and uh, not just a generic quote but like giving you perspective on that day and uh, based on people that were alive years ago if you like and um if you look into people if you if you follow in stoic philosophy stuff and you look into it then you'll, you'll start to come across people like seneca epictetus marcus aurelius and um the way they live lives when they were like marcus aurelius was an emperor back in the day and as far as I, my memory serves me correct like he went through so much turmoil and people tried to kill him nearly every day of the week and just how he overcame that and he also wrote a book so at the end of every day he sat down in the evening to write a book on just his thoughts and his views and perspectives in the world and that has sold millions of copies today i actually have a copy of the original meditations not the original but um, his book at home where it's kind of like the raw thoughts and um again i've read that there is a ton of stuff out there guys and it all started for me having a want to not kind of stay, stay going down the route i was coming and i thought 
in terms of like being kind of negative not having a direction or purpose behind doing what i was doing and that's what sparked this originally and if anything because i know even with our most successful clients they always seem to look back at times and not even look back they always seem to get pissed off when they can't lose that next pound when they can't get that extra weight lifted in the gym or when they can't do that extra push-up or whatever it might be um but they completely forget how far they've come in the first place which is a massive thing you have to stop to realize how far you've actually come and to review the last few months the last few weeks the last few years even to realize shit i was there and now i'm here holy shit and then you said it grounds you a little bit and again having this kind of stoic philosophy having the having kind of the perspective on things it's always like regrounding you to make you kind of come out of your own bullshit so like if you're somebody that might um get beeped at in traffic and be pissed off for five minutes when you develop yourself over time that five minutes might go down to four minutes might go down to three minutes and eventually it's just gone and people are beeping around at your traffic and you know it's kind of like water under the bridge type thing and see some people naturally have this anyway which is fantastic but i know a lot of people don't and for those that are if you're listening to this far hopefully you're starting to hit home on those kind of slight levels with it um but again you have to be willing to better yourself as a person with this and again look at this is the whole reason why you listen to this podcast you're already doing that but just give yourself a pat on the back for how far you have come if you're not where you're at right now and you have, haven't a clue how to move forward you have some sort of a clue but you're just stuck the easiest thing i can say and i will always repeat this get onto a fucking course that you can relate to so you can start making progress it's as simple as that like obviously if that's getting on to us with doc fitness online or getting out if you're living near us here in galway you want to come down to the gym and have a chat like take the step and do that we're not just people that train you and don't give a shit about what happens outside everything else we train you or else we provide training for online we coach you nutritionally and we do small little bits with your mindset as well and then we coach that over time as well it's not just something where you know you learn the first initial weeks and that's it you're constantly developing that over time and you're always taking the pluses from that so you can build on those and that's kind of good circles back to the question and again like how have you developed your mind to always take positives from situations because like i could easily answer this at the start and just say like what's the point of not taking the positive from a situation it's like um it's funny because i heard uh somebody say this a few months ago people that i know and that are close to me they said it about, about someone else when they were having a bad day they're like jesus there could be ten there could have been nine things that went right today but you'd focus on the one that went wrong and that kind of really st- stuck home with me like and just and to say that like if you flipped it in the head like there could be nine things or ten things or twenty things that go shitty in your day or go wrong in your day but if you're just focusing on that one that went right you'd be better off for at the end of the day rather than focusing on all the stuff that went wrong do you know what i mean it's, it's easy to it's easy to kind of overly focus on those things because i think we're conditioned to it from such a young age that we don't even kind of stop to think about shit what went right this week and it's something that we're constantly reminding our clients on as well like oh i had a bad week with nutrition i i, I ate too much on saturday and then we're kind of like yeah but you're fucking human you went out with your friends you enjoyed yourself you trained four times that week uh you still lost weight at the end of the week you're stronger than you were last week and you know x y and z but yet they focus on this one day out of the whole week where things mightn't have gone 100 percent to plan and they realize okay yeah you're right and then they learn for the next time because if, you, if if you're focusing on the negative you can't see the solution or the learning point from that because every single thing you do if you're looking at it from a learning point you're getting better for the future so then you don't have this kind of black and white thinking when it comes to your training or nutrition or this kind of fuck it mentality you're like right this happened this time what can i do next time to make that better or what can i do next time to make it easier or rectified for the future and that's by setting goals working on yourself in general and just doing shit for yourself to better yourself as a person it breeds all this stuff over time anyway and you start to see that um so hopefully there's some takeaways there i don't know if there is but it's just a little kind of story to date and kind of how my journey has come along to help the clients the best i can in terms of like from a mindset goal setting perspective and kind of the way i do things myself and um that's about it really life's too short guys to get fucking pissed off over little things that absolutely mean nothing at the end of the day and uh that's why i love the stoic philosophy stuff look into that a little bit more if you want to look into it because there are some kind of life lessons there and ways of life that you can go about daily and again look at this is not to say that you don't get pissed off at certain situations that you don't get pissed off at people of course you do 
but if anything it'll reduce the way you do it now and get you to think on different levels and to be a bit more kind of grateful for the things that you have and do in life already like because um when you look into it deeper it's actually one little thing i'll add before i go is that you start to realize that you have you quote unquote have everything that you need and when you stop and think of that for a minute wherever you're listening to this right now if you're walking down the road listen to this if you're in the car on the way to work and you're stressed out about getting to work because you're late or you're stressed out about something small in your head that you fucking know for a fact makes absolutely no difference in the world when things are all said and done just take a breath for a second and realize that you're probably overthinking things that moment and when you realize that it's, it's kind of like a, a little relief in a way like um but again one thing that helps you to kind of develop that perspective and develop that mindset around that is and i i think i i don't know i heard this off numerous kind of people out there that were doing mindset and goal setting books the time but at the start of every day you sit down and you write out three little points that you're grateful for and again this comes back to habit formation and routines over time and it's something that we've we've recommended to clients over time as well like but when you start your day the first thing you do so if it's in work you might open up your laptop or your diary or whatever to start the day but the first thing you do before you start the day is in your diary you go in and you write down three little bullet points of three simple things that you're grateful for that might have happened over the last 24 hours and i did that i still do it to this day actually um i, I it's so automatic now i don't even think i'm doing it and some weeks or some days i might do it but the majority of the time throughout the year i do it nearly every single day obviously if you're on holidays and other times it's different but like your brain automatically starts to think that way anyway and again it sounds a bit airy fairy but if it when you start to do it it's powerful and there's other ways of doing it as well it's it's, it's little things like you know you can be grateful for absolutely anything and that's the easiest way to think about that you could be grateful for the house that you live in you could be grateful for the relationship you have with your friends you could be grateful for the relationship you have with your mother you could be grateful for the fact that you were able to train this week you'd be grateful for the fact that you've got you're strong and you're healthy do you know what i mean there's, there's so much stuff that you can do and yes you will find you're repeating yourself some days but if anything you're starting that day and kind of like a gratitude kind of positive knowing it's kind of like a feel-good factor type thing you don't need to tell anyone you're doing it again this is why i don't promote it that often this is why i'm putting it into a podcast because it's going straight into your head and your ears is that it's just a powerful thing to kind of bring a little bit more kind of like positive vibes in and again i don't want this to go south and realize i'm trying to be all this positive uh, anti-negative person not at all again it's just to kind of help you get better with things over time and to develop that kind of like mindset overall where you always see the positives from things you always see the kind of learning curves from things so you can move forward and when shit hits the fan you can get past that and you can move forward from that better than you were the last time and you can set goals for yourself you can follow through those goals for yourself and get where you want to go because at the end of the day this is where you this is what you this is why we're doing things so you can just be a little bit more happier in yourself in your day to day life like and ultimately that's the end goal really here and that's what we want for all our clients we want them to live a better quality of life overall and we think and we believe that if we don't try and help them with their mindset and with their goal setting stuff we're not going to be able to achieve that like somebody could be coming into us here in, in Chicago and go three or five times a week and train their arse off even get their nutrition spot on so they're in a caloric deficit drop body fat or they're in a surplus to gain muscle whatever the goal is but yet they could be going back home to a really negative environment they could be going into work into a negative environment and it's completely like holding them back in other areas like so yeah that's why we do what we do at the end of the day and as i said about five times now i hope there's some takeaways in this i will link up everything in the show notes and if you have any questions on this episode please either pop me over an email or one of the easiest places to catch me will just be sending me a direct message on instagram and guys thanks a million again for tuning in and i hope you've enjoyed the episodes to date and we shall chat to you soon bye bye